Hey there everyone, my name is Forrest Emmel, and I'm back with a brand new, hopefully good video. Uh, this video is about values. I got a couple uh, requests from people uh, who have been struggling with values and kind of want to know how I go about studying it. And I thought while I do that, I might as well break down pretty much what I know about values and try and help some people out. So I'm not like a master of values, you know, I'm not a big teacher, I'm a student just as much as any of you guys are, uh, but I do know some things about value, and so that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. I'm going to be making a lot of references to guys like uh, Kikai Kotaki, uh, I'm going to be bringing up uh, Anthony Jones, because he's been uh, kind of popping up more than usual lately with some of his videos, which if you haven't gotten those uh, tutorials he's been releasing, you should definitely check it out. I'll, I'll have a link to that down below. Um, and I'll be mentioning a lot of the stuff that they've talked about with values, and then some other things that uh, they, they might not have talked about. So before I get into the studying portion of the video, I want to go over the two different categories for values, which Anthony Jones has talked about on one of his streams, and I'm sort of stealing that. And he probably talks about them more in his tutorials. Um, one of those categories being graphic design, uh, which is his word for it, I think it works, uh, which is basically the base values of certain things. So, say, a black jacket against a white shirt. Obviously, you want to look there. It's black against white, it's the highest contrast, your eyes just go there, and that's just how it works. And then there's lighting. So let's say a very tan person is wearing that black jacket and that white shirt, and there's some some uh, lighting hitting the side of that guy's face that makes his face very, very bright. And none of that lighting is hitting the shirt, so the shirt's still dark. So there's actually higher contrast in the light on the face than there is on the jacket and the shirt. And these things you really have to consider when making an image. So I'll get into the graphic design and the lighting and sort of explain that a little bit better here in a second. But I also wanted to talk about this, which, uh, and this is an illustration by Kakai Kotaki, and I thought uh, his illustrations are a fantastic example of this. And uh, what this is an example of is breaking down an illustration into layers of value. So as you can see in the foreground, those characters, the darkest darks. They have the darkest shadows, they're very, everything is dark in comparison to uh, the next level, which is that statue in the back. And then the level after that is lighter, and then the level after that is lighter. And as things recede into space in this image, they become lighter. There's these layers of value in the image. Now, you don't see this all the time, but you do need to consider this. Um, it, it, keeping these sort of layers of values, uh, it really simplifies the image. Uh, just as these layers, just as the simple layers of values, this image is very readable. You know what's happening, you know what it's going to be about, and uh, that you know has to do with silhouette, it has to do with the value separation, but uh, either way, you need to consider these things. Now you might be saying to yourself, but Forrest, the, the darkest darks, they're, they're right up against the other darkest darks, why is he the focal point? And you're right, the darkest darks of that character, uh, the focal point, are right up against the next darkest darks. However, if we turn all of these layers off and we go back to the original image, lighting sort of takes, takes over. We got that sheen on top of the guy's helmet, uh, which is just as bright as the brightest bright, and having that up against the darkest darks, it just it makes your eye want to go there. Uh, you get sort of the same exact effect with the girl over on the right. Uh, and using uh, the combination of, you know, gr of graphic design, of lighting, and also considering this sort of, uh, this sort of stacking of valued layers uh, can really help uh, establish a good focal point and uh, a really just uh, smooth image. So next I'm going to be going over the graphic design, and since Anthony Jones is basically the one that coined that sort of phrase, I'm going to be using his art as an example, because he uses it all the time very well. So, graphic design. Basically, separating parts into general value and using those values to grab uh, a focal point through contrast. So, there's silhouette of this girl up against a white background. Obviously your eyes want to look there, but if you look inside of the silhouette, 
there's this skin that is, it's basically white. I simplified it here and made it white. And it's white surrounded by pure black. And that right there just makes you want to just, it just locks your eyes right on there. And this is the most simplified form of graphic design. You can think of it even more complicated when doing your own character. Think of having uh, different pieces of armor, say on a warrior, be different values. You'd want your metal to be a little bit lighter than your leather, and your leather to be a little bit darker than your cloth. Thinking of things like this, uh, it can help your character stand out, because all of your values are sort of, uh, they're not similar. If they're all similar, then it's going to be gray, and it's going to be muddy, and everything's going to sort of look dull. So you want to keep uh, having that value separation in there to keep it interesting. But also keep in mind having that contrast. Try and make sure you have that darkest dark against that lightest light. So I thought I would use uh, an image from an old master that actually uses graphic design very, very well. Uh, this was by Jean-Léon Jerome. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but that's how I'm pronouncing it. And it, that is the nude woman in this just it, she just pops right out against that black background everything is pretty much dull there's a secondary focus uh, kind of on that guy to the left he's popping out a lot against that dark background too but not nearly as much as that nude figure just against that and then everything else is kind of dull there's a little bit of some uh, some white down below with uh, looks like some her clothes uh, or something like that but you can see, even in an illustration, uh, that using this white against black, uh, and ev even her shadows are still, they're lighter than the background. And using this can, and thinking about uh, these the values in your illustrations like this, uh, is very, very beneficial. So now I'm going to get into lighting, and then after this I'm going to show a study that I do of uh, how I go about studying lighting and value. And uh, the reason I want to go over this is because a lot of people that when they first start out, or you know, people that are still far, pretty far along actually, uh, tend to do this, uh, maybe they're a little skeptical about their own values, is uh, they don't go dark enough or they don't go light enough, and so they they generally in their images have just a, a kind of a mid-tone. It sort of keeps everything washed out. Or you get the opposite, where people only go very, very bright, and they only go very, very dark, and so it's just crazy contrast everywhere. Now, you need to learn how to balance this, obviously, and so to do that, you should study uh, lighting and values in lighting. So... Uh, I, I grabbed this image off the internet of this guy wearing a tuxedo. Sorry for the image, it was the only one I could find off Google. And I, I just wanted to, to show you this real quick to show that uh, if you see, I broke, I've broken down the values into uh, tens. So on, on my color wheel here on the right, you can see I have ten options for black and white. One being white, ten being black. It can be reversed. Whatever helps you remember it better. And I really recommend doing this because breaking down value like this makes it so much easier later on, especially if you can't see value in color. It's kind of hard for me to see value in color. I'm getting a little better at it, but it's still kind of hard for me. Breaking down values into a number system allows me, so when I do an image or an illustration, I don't think about what what exactly looks right. My eyes are my eyes are adjusting. By doing more studies, I can slowly, I'm, I'm getting used to, to seeing when my values are correct. But what it allows me to do is I can do a study, or I can make an observation like I've made here, and then go into my image, and instead of being skeptical and being like, oh, maybe it was a, about up here was the value, you know, uh, or, or maybe it was only this bright, or maybe it was this dark, I think. Instead, I have a number system, so I know that, oh, the darkest dark it gets there was about right there. It wasn't fully black, it was just a little bit higher, but it wasn't 
it was further than 9.5, so it was about like a 9.75, something like that. So it was right there was that value. And then the lightest black was 4, so I pressed 4, it was right here. I can, you know, go up or down just ever so slightly, but it was around 4. Uh, and the darkest white was actually 4.5, so I can go to 5, and I can go to 4, and I can pick a spot right in the middle, and then I can go out to the color. And then white was just 1. And making these observations, it's sort of setting a rule for yourself. It's sort of saying, okay, I, I don't need to rely so much on my eyes. I can now rely off my system. I know that, uh, that a jacket uh, in light, a black jacket in light, is actually, it can get up to a 4 value. I don't need to be afraid and go darker because you know for sure. Uh, what I often do is I will do a study, and then I will color pick afterwards, and I'm actually going to get into that right now. I just wanted to show, to start off, uh, these sort of observations uh, that, are, that are good to make and how to use this number system. Um, and making these observations, you, you would see things that you normally wouldn't even think about. You, you wouldn't think that the darkest, the shadows in a white uh, shirt are actually darker than a black jacket in light. And James Gurney's Color and Light book goes over this a little bit more into detail, uh, but I thought it was a fantastic example to, to explain um, this sort of, these sort of observations that you should try and be making. All right, so on to the study. So I'm blocking in the silhouette with just a general value, uh, what I think is the uh, general shadow. Uh, and then I start kind of blocking in the light with, uh, again, what I, what looks like the general lighting of that area. Uh, as it gets higher and more towards the light, it obviously gets brighter, and so I try to keep things like that in mind. Right now, uh, I'm trying to just get my values as accurate as possible. I don't need the image to be as accurate as possible. I don't care about that. What I need to know is, are my values correct? Uh, I need to be training my eye to understand that, okay, this is this value. This is this darkness, or uh, it's this bright. Um, and, uh, oh, I, I wanted to mention that uh, this sculptor, uh, who's fantastic, uh, I can't take credit for, for learning about him. I was watching a stream of Thomas Mons, and if you haven't seen his art, uh, you should. He's super frickin' too good. Uh, I'll have a link to his deviant art below, and to this sculptor's below. Um, because studying sculpting like this, like, it's great for lighting, it's great to, to understand form a little bit better than just looking at a, um, a 2D image, because it's almost like, uh, it, <laughs> I don't know, it's almost like super form, the way that you sort of see things, and, and everything is sort of, it's the same exact, uh, base value, or base color, so it makes it a little bit easier to, to see things. So yeah, again, not trying to make this super accurate. Uh, it's really not. The jawline could be a little bit lower. The uh, the back or shoulder should probably go in a little bit more. Slant downwards some. One ear is slightly higher than it should be. Like little things like that. Like I don't need to. I don't care about that. Like I'm just trying to get my values accurate. And even then, my values aren't accurate. You know, I I'm still very much learning. I, this isn't going to be perfect. It's, I'm not gonna instantly be awesome at values because, you know, uh, I, I'm taking the time to study them. It's a long process. But doing things like that, like this, like training your eye to see value, uh, it, it's good. You, you need to do it if you want to actually be able to, to use value correctly in your images. So here I'm taking notes. Uh, after I'm done writing all these notes here, I'm going to... Uh, take a take a moment to talk to you guys about what exactly I write about what kind of observations I'm making all right so here's the finished study not as accurate as it could be values are a little bit off here and there probably could have gone a little bit darker on the uh, cheekbone and on the lower jaw um, 
yeah, probably probably could have gone a little darker in some areas. But basically, the the whole face uh, I had was was a little bit too bright. Could have gone down a, an extra an extra value range or so. Um, but it's all it's all in, in the sake of learning. So some of the studies uh, or all the studies that I do, I like to take notes and. Uh, Part of those notes, depending on if I'm studying color or if I'm studying, you know, value, uh, I usually compare my study to the other study by color picking. So I color picked the same exact spots on my study and then the same spots on the original sculpt. And uh, doing this, it helps me realize uh, or helps me notice if I need to go darker or if I need to go brighter. Um, what areas I need to be brighter or darker in, if it's shadows I'm not going dark enough, or if I'm not going bright enough on the highlights. Uh, I ended up not going dark enough in the ambient occlusion areas and in the highlights. Uh, highlights were just about pure white, which I was a little afraid to do just because I was told not to go pure white or pure black. And So I'm a little skeptical to do that, but I realized in studies I should probably just say whatever and just do it. Uh, so I wasn't going dark enough or light enough. Uh, in those areas, and I made a point to, to mention that twice, actually, at the bottom and at the top. Uh, I said, say, the brightest brights for highlights and the darkest darks for AO. Go darker with AO, go brighter with highlights. And uh, I also had average light and average shadow with numbers inside of each. So with average light, I'm just kind of getting an idea of, okay, so what, if, if, if this was just really diffused light, uh, what is the average light here? And that was about a 4. And then the average shadow was about an 8. And that's kind of eyeballing it, but that's what I got. And that's about a 4 value range difference. And considering things like that would be good. It's I, I feel like it's good to know those sort of things. I need to know what the difference between the value of a shadow and the value of a light is. And that's going to change depending on the circumstances. With no ambient light, the shadow is going to be much, much darker. Um, but in this situation, it was a four value range difference. Uh, and then there's some other studies I had. It's talking about how the, the lighting is diffused because there's very, very soft shadows, almost no crisp shadows at all. Um, little, little observations like that. But doing studies like this has helped me immensely. Taking notes, comparing my study to the other study, instead of just sitting and looking and being like, oh man, the nose is too big, I gotta remember that for next time, because obviously by me knowing that I made the nose too big, I can then paint noses better. Like, that just, it, does, it doesn't make sense to me. Uh, so, I really recommend at least trying these sort of studies. They might not work for everybody, but just trying them. There's no harm to it. So unfortunately, I didn't get to save uh, me applying the last study, but so I decided to do a different one. And this is a screen cap from Pacific Rim. And uh, after this, I'm going to show you what I'm applying it to. I'm applying it to a, a, an accepted thumbnail for some client work. And um, so what I'm doing here is trying to get an idea for the scene. I, I, the, the illustration is of a giant hydra. And I thought this was a great scene of like a giant thing blocking out the sun, causing these sun streams or smoke everywhere, like everything's destroyed. And it's kind of what I want to get across is like this gloomy sort of area, but this like, like <laughs> giant is just blocking out the sun. I don't know. It seemed cool to me. And so trying to get my values as accurate as possible. And I'm actually using a, uh, a brush with no opacity right now, which is Oh, man, is it hard. Uh, it, I start to use some with opacity. Like, I just started using the soft brush and stuff to get some of those rays of light in there. I just wanted to block in the values first with uh, a brush that had no opacity. Uh, and it was really challenging, too. And I still have quite a bit of struggles later on with the ground down below. Uh, I think I started a little too bright. And I get it a little bit closer as, as time goes on. Not really going for accuracy, though. It doesn't need to be accurate. Like, I don't need to render out that car on the bottom right or any of the rubble or anything like that. Just, you know, block in the values, get an idea for what the surroundings are like. Uh, I try to see what value the smoke is, because the smoke is actually very dark and not too far off uh, from what those lit up um, cinder blocks are, uh, or, you know, concrete is down below. 
And same with the uh, the robot, the the mech. It's it's also very dark as it gets down below, and uh, I thought you know further in space, covered in smoke, it, it'd be a little bit lighter. But uh, even the top part, I think, is around. It looks like a like a five or a, yeah, like five or six somewhere around there. I don't remember exactly what it was. Uh, now I'm making my notes kind of comparing the uh, value ranges. Um, I, I don't actually think I compare my original values in this one. I think I just kind of keep track of notes. And I mean, you could do that. That, that works too. You don't have to compare yourself. Just kind of get your yourself in the idea of uh, values. Yeah, okay, five or six for the lightest part of the mech there. And you know, making these notes... Uh, Sunbeams, uh, and you'll see how so you'll see how I apply these too, just in just a minute on uh, my own thing. And I'm making kind of a last summary of, of what I want to do, how how light I can go, how dark I can go. All right, so here's the accepted thumbnail I did. You can see I start darkening everything out. I was like, man, that that's just way too bright. Uh, if I want to get that same same exact look, I start adding in that uh that sunshine in the back. Start adding in some some sun streams, and so after taking those notes, I now know like okay, so I want to stick to seven. Seven was the major number that I wanted to stick to uh, when when creating uh, that same atmosphere, that same sort of look. Uh, the sh the The smoke was about seven to a seven point five. Uh, nothing ever got brighter than 7 except for the things that were reflecting light or the sun itself. Um, yeah, and so I, I'm keeping that, that thing in mind. And obviously, I don't have to stick just to the screen cap that I studied. You know, I'm probably going to keep those mountains in the back a little bit lighter. Um, just, you know, because I have to consider that value separation. I still have to make the image read well. And so, yeah, as you can see, like, I darkened them a little bit, but the hydra's still darker, and so it still kind of reads nicely. And there's some before and after. Well, that's pretty much all I wanted to get across with this video. Um, just wanted to show you guys, uh, you know, basically all I know about values. Um, about the, uh, the layering of values in an illustration. Um, with Keikai's illustration, uh, there's Anthony Jones's graphic design, uh, and then there was general lighting that you need to consider as well. Uh, I want to get more into lighting and into color in a future video. Probably my next one will be about that. It just makes sense since this is about value. Uh, I study it a very similar way, same number system, uh, except it's a, it's a little bit different, a little more complicated in some areas. Uh, and I'll get into color relativity and stuff like that. Uh, but I hope this video helped you guys. I really recommend tr at least trying that number system that I try. It, it helped me a ton. Uh, ever since I started doing it, my old images used to look very washed out. They were all very gray. Uh, and then when I compared my values to uh, the values of an actual study that I was doing, I realized I wasn't going dark enough and bright enough. And, and uh, since I started doing that, it's helped me a ton. So I really, really recommend it. Um, that, taking notes, making observations, and then applying it to your own work especially. Always the applying. Uh, but I hope this video helped you guys out, and uh, I will talk to you later.